Hello, welcome back. I guess this is a camera feed, not me looking out my window at Long Tongue. Maybe I don't have a window. Anyway, yeah, so last time I learned a little bit about the game and a lot about myself. Uh, I got this puzzle done and I should be happy about that. It's fine. <laughs> Incredible opportunity. Land rich in rare earths. From Rare Earth Advisors, rareearthglobalpartners.real. <laughs> We are contacting you about an incredible once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to, own a, uh, to own land rich in rare earth metals in the western region of China. What are rare earths? Rare earth metals power the world's electronics, phones, engines, motors. It's fair to say the world would not run without them. But the world's supply of rare earth metals is drying up. Mining companies can't refine them fast enough to meet demand, and now the mining firms are looking to expand. Now is the time to own this land before the mining firms find it. Rare Earth Advisor Realty Co. Miami, Florida. Wait, what? <laughs> also, I need a spam filter in here. Remote kill switch. I would like to have a remote kill switch for autonomous systems. Robots. This is in case of failure of the autonomous system. Of course, such a switch would not be needed if we always designed the system correctly. We should make this. I will create the transmitter and you will create the receiver. Okay, so working directly alongside Zia. Doing one half, he does another. Cool. Negative one, keep alive, zero power off, one power on. Do nothing, read another value, and turn off that input. Uh, radio RX, not blocking ice bus. Power zero, power one, and power two are simple outputs connected to high power switches that control industrial equipment. When a data packet is received over the radio, read it and execute the corresponding command in the following table. Okay, so when I get a zero or a one, I need to get an index zero, one, or two in the next packet and change its state to, these are all simple outputs. I assume it's 100 and zero. Okay, sure. Well, this looks like... Okay, so I see the trap here. If I use a DX300, then every output to that is going to affect the state of all three of these, which might be fine. Should be absolutely fine. In fact, this is set up in the most ideal way for... Um, I can do this and it'll be okay, sure. This is set up in the most ideal way for uh, DST. The indexes that I'm given, unlike some earlier puzzles, are very friendly to actually uh, making that work. I won't get away with this, but I'm gonna start with it. Rx, x0, okay. Uh, nope, can't do a TCP. It needs to be, if it's a 0 or a 1. Okay, so, uh, are you sure? Yeah, okay, so if I use a TCP here, I mean, this is not even vaguely close to enough space already. I'm gonna go straight to one of these. TCP is x00, zero, zero, minus jump loop. Loop is gonna be sleep one. Let's call it end. Uh, in either of the other cases, then yeah, I do want to Ooh, interesting. Uh, ooh, okay. I think I see some cool things that can be done here. Power on. Move one, uh, so. Move zero dat plus move one dat. 
Got some ideas here. DST X0 Hold on, tell me about DST one more time uh -huh. uh, Set the digit of ACK specified by the first operand to the value of the second operand Yes, okay DST X0 so whatever input comes in there. Yes. Uh, whatever I set that to. Hold on, this might fit in an MC4000 now. Move ACK X3. That absolutely fits into one of those. I can't see my selection when there's... Hmm. All right, that's fine. So that's no longer x3, that's now x1. Oh no, I don't have dat then. Aww. Uh, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. In fact, this will be even more efficient, kinda. Power efficiency is not perfect. ST. Oh, wait, but no, I can't read the X0 and then read it again here. Yeah, because I want to store ACK. I want ACK to keep the, the state of this thing. All right, so even if I don't need the instruction space, I need the DAT register for this. If it could be negative one for power off and one for power on, then this would be more friendly because my TCP would... Uh, and do those things. Although, then I wouldn't be able to do this. I don't know. Let's see if this works. Am I thinking about this right? 1-1. One, one. Alright, so x0 was 1, which has activated that. Uh, so yeah, 1 is the value I'm going to write to the digit that I want to write. DST X0, DST1, dat, so 1, 0, move ACK X3, you go there and set that to that, power 1 is on, sleep 1, yes, great. 1, 2, yep. Uh, hold on, did my off not work? What happened there? Zero, zero, negative nine, nine, nine. Why is this? Why does nothing happen here, but this goes to zero? Oh, turn off all power outputs when five or more time units have elapsed without receiving a data packet. I completely missed that part of the program. Okay. <laughs> So, there's another aspect to this. I thought this seemed awfully simple. Okay, so, um... I need another register now. I think... I can overload dat for this. I can totally overload dat for this. Wait, I can't add to dat. Oh shoot, I can't add to dat. Never mind. All right, I'm going to need another thing to help me out. All right, well, you know what? If I'm doing that, there is trickery that I can pull. Okay, so I think I have an opportunity to do with this with two MC4000s. 
Got some ideas here. Right, there's no dat. Don't worry about it. Both your X buses are taken up. Oh. You could do the IO, I guess. You could, or you could do the IO, I guess. Okay, hmm. So this would require a lot of reorganization. All right, so I was writing the wrong program. The thing I need to change is to start counting time. I'm going to do that in the ACK register here. And I want to store something on an output pin. But I need more X bus. IO space here. So I'm going to have to switch it so that this thing is what communicates to this, which is completely fine. I can do that. It's a little awkward, but sure. Uh, you know what's less awkward? No, it's not. Never mind. That works fine. Okay, so how am I reorganizing this? If you're communicating to that. Okay, so this communicates to the radio. P0. All right, so P0 is the value of... Um, whoa, whoa. Uh value to write to the digits. I can set it twice, it'll just sit there. But wasn't I going to store something else there? Okay, your accumulator is now going to be the uh, the count of time units. And I think I can do all that. 1p0 move uh, x0, x1. So I shuffle the value from here through to there, waking this up. Hmm. That's interesting. How am I going to turn everything off with that, though, I wonder? There are probably ways. Okay. Yeah, the this is not actually making my job any easier in the shut everything off after five time units with nothing. I'm gonna go forward and see if I can still manage to make it happen. TST X0 P0. Move ACK X1, so that's going to set the state here, sure. So SLX X0, that would be DST X0 P0, yes. Yes, so set the digit at that index to this value. In ACK. But the problem is I need some conditional logic here. That's fine, I can do that. Uh, tech X0. Ah, not like this. That doesn't work. Uh, hold on, what's your accumulator doing? Okay, I think this fits. So this this will be able to send two separate commands to this. One will be read my next input and set the digit of my next next input to the value on this pin and then send it. The other will be turn everything off. That's fine. Tech X zero zero. Uh, sure. Okay, so the zero command means set everything to zero. The one command will mean okay, uh, move zero ack minus uh, 
minus dst x0 p0, move ack x1. Is that really it? Whoa, that's simple. Neat. Am I going to be able to fit a counter in here? I don't know. So your accumulator is currently unused. This is looking pretty efficient if I can pull off what I'm trying to pull off. It might be possible. These be x0, 0, 0. If negative 1, uh, add 1. Oh boy, uh, that's unfortunate. This no longer looks like it fits. And I can't do this kind of conditional here. No, you're going to need to do some processing on your own. That's okay. Hmm. Uh... Add one. Okay, so I'm already within a conditional here. If I want to test... All right, so I'm going to have to do... Uh, I'm going to have to add a jump here. P on. P on. There we go. Uh, that's fine. P on. Is it this way around or is it the other way around? I think it's the other way around. So I don't need the plus there anymore. Yes, I do. Yeah. I don't think this is going to work. So you jump peon, add one. Uh, also, I'm out of lines. Okay, so unfortunately you're going to have to become one of these, probably. I'm not sure about this yet, though. Let's do it for now and, like, write out this program, then I'll think about maybe changing it back. If I get an opportunity... X0 becomes X0... X1 becomes X2... Okay, so TLT... Ack five. If it's less than five, then just go ahead and keep doing this. No, uh, I guess I'll test for equality. That's fine. Right, because it's only right at five that I want to turn the power off. At six, I'm going to do nothing because the power is already off. Uh, jump end. Okay, so I need to move zero ack to reset my counter when I get an actual command. Okay, I'm doing nothing with this test so far. If it is five... If it is 5, then I want to move 0, x2, which means move 0, ack, and then move ack, x1. So you don't read any additional x0 there, that's fine. And then this still needs to jump end.
I guess I put that here. Ick. All right, so this is, I need to, I'm just gonna go ahead with the solution, even if it looks gross and make sure it works first, because that's important. If I have bugs to work out, those are more important than optimizations. Optimization comes after the program actually works. Or never. <laughs> One or the other. Uh, okay, so for, ec for, for every negative one that I get, which is, okay, so, right. If I get a zero, then none of this executes. If I get a one, then this jumps straight over here. Conveniently skipping this instruction, which sets uh, that. And also that instruction is skipped if I'm on the other path. So that's neat. Okay, so I, I wormed some efficiency out of this accidentally. Uh, if it is a zero, right, yeah, if it's a zero, that's all skipped. If it's a negative one, right, yeah, if it's a one, if it's a negative one, I add one to ACK. If ACK has hit five exactly, then I send the zero command through X2 over here, which hits this code path and moves that out there. It does this and goes back to sleeping, waiting for input from you. Uh, you then jump to end. If ACK was not five, you just jump to end. Great. Okay, so if it was zero that came in, Ooh, this is not right. I need to actually put this here. Because of the jump P on. Just just for, for parity, that's fine. All right, P off, move zero, P zero, P on, move one, P zero. I wonder If that's valid and in what order values are read. Cannot read pin twice. It's not valid. Okay, and question answered, good. If I were writing in C or something, that would be uh, unspecified behavior, like which order uh, function parameters are evaluated. Like if they rely on each other or rely on evaluation order for what their value is. Unless it is completely reliable and fully specified in the language you're using. Not a good idea to use stuff like that. Right, so P off from zero, P on, move one, P zero, move zero, ack. Right, so reset the counter, move X zero, X two. I need one more move here. Move one, X two, so I'm giving you a command that is not zero. So that this will fail, you'll then read the value from the radio here and the value that was set on the simple pin here. Why am I using the simple pin? Well, at this point, I guess it's to get away, uh, to get out of having to do this, which I can't. Uh, it had a different purpose initially. I was gonna just like store data on this line somewhere somehow, but I think that was never going to actually work. This just happened to work out for a different purpose than I originally put it in for. Okay, and then, yeah, you communicate that, and you sleep, and you know what? This fit nicely. I no longer feel a need to try to replace it with one of these, because there's no way that's going to happen. Great. Bad. Oh, negative one is a... Oh, what? Without receiving a data packet. Hold on, what? You read the negative 999. I need to distinguish between that and negative one. That's what you're talking, oh. Great. Okay, so negative one, yeah, that's right. This is keep alive. That's what this means. Okay, so I can't TCP, huh? Well, I'm not using dat, so I guess I can use dat. I'm out of lines. B 
but maybe this ridiculous snarl that I've built here can be compacted if I'm doing this a different way. Yeah, so just handle each case individually. Tech dat negative one plus jump end. Uh, I need like a, a copy paste space or something. Maybe I don't. Uh, I'm gonna need all these lines, huh? Can you do the TCP? I don't think you can. You do have room though. What if I did that? Add one, take act five. Move zero X two, jump end. Well, I don't need to jump to anything right now, actually. Tech dat. Actually, here I can do the TCP, can't I? Uh, this might work. So if I go back to that pattern... All right, so what is this currently doing? Read the command. If it's nothing, then start counting. If you've counted to five, then send this command and... I guess I do need both of these still. Send that command and don't do the rest of that. So you can then TCP dat zero. I will need a minus jump end there. Well, check it out. I can do it there. Yes, I want to jump to the end if it's less. That will happen in both negative 999 and negative 1. All right, so this is overloaded and that's fine. It does mean that while idle, both of these will happen, which is a little uncomfortable, but I, they would have to both happen anyway. Yeah, kind of. I mean, either that or a jump instruction, and that takes the same amount of power as this, right? Well, but then the jump also happens. So yeah, it'd be more power efficient if I could also put this line before that, but that's fine. Okay, does the rest of this hypothetically work? Move 0, P0, but if it wasn't a 0, then move 1 to P0. So yeah, another slight inefficiency. You don't skip over this line if it's a 1, which is fine. Uh, reset the count, yes. Uh, whether it's negative 1 or... Oh, wait. Uh... So I need an end R, which is the end that also resets. Okay, that works. So you received not a negative 999. That's not true. No, that was overloaded. So it receives a, oh shoot, okay. Uh, no, I still need to discriminate. That does not work. Uh, 
Move one x two, move x zero x two, move zero p one, move one p one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can I do that? Yeah, I can. Yes, I can. Of course I can, because that will be either zero or one. Yes, okay. So that saves me a line. Both in terms of line count and execution. Allowing me to put this here. T speed at zero, jump end. I still need this. This can now be end R. I think I fit it all. Okay, so one more time. Read this value, put it in that. If it's a non-value, start counting. If you've hit five while you've been counting, then send the zero command, which will uh, set this all to zero. Let's just assume that part works and you'll jump to end. If you haven't hit five, you'll just jump to end and sleeps and tries to read that again. Okay, so if you, ha if you don't have a negative nine, 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 check what you do have. Right, yeah, so this ensures that negative 999 will never hit this code path. Great. Efficiency. Uh, and also it works, maybe. <laughs> it, it'll be efficient and also it'll allow it to work. How nice. So, then I see if I have a negative one, a zero, or a one. I'll just assume those are the only four values that can come in, which does seem to be the case in my test data. If it's a negative one, I reset the count and I go to sleep for one and then I recheck. Perfect. No matter what else it is, I move that to P0 for this to use later. Then I tell this. So I send an X bus output command to this to not clear its thing, but instead to set the digits to the next value coming in the digit at the index of the next value coming in to whatever was on that pin, which was already sent with this. And then we reset the counter and sleep one, and I think it's perfect. Any more oversights or did I do it? I also don't currently have anything I wish to optimize further there, so if this works, I'm gonna be happy with it. Didn't work, why? That is one. It's not a negative nine at nine. What? What? What, what, what? I have this written like a TCP. Yeah, this whole conditional didn't make sense, did it? So I guess this wants to be plus for one thing. Add one. Tick act five. I don't want this, right? Uh. Yeah, okay, I had my conditionals confused and I'm not certain I'm gonna be able to fix them so easy. Okay, so if it is a negative 999, hold on, does this just work if I do this? If it's not greater than negative 999, then I try that, I count. If it is, you're still gonna reset. Yeah, this is going to go off. I need a plus before this tech to jump to end. So I need to fit another plus instruction in right here, don't I? Is that right? Okay, moving zero dat PGT dat negative nine nine nine. So 
So if I do get a negative 999, does this all work? And one, take x5, and zero x2, jump end, jump end. Yes. Uh, I think I might be able to delete both of these. Yeah, okay. I can, uh, or rather, I can compact these down to one, make it unconditional. Yes, okay, this works. Uh, if greater than jump command. All right. So if you get a negative 999, if you get anything other than that, anything greater, then you move on to checking what it actually is. So there's real data here. Great. Uh, if you do get a negative 999, you start going through this stuff. You might take an action here if it's hit exactly five. Regardless, you're going to go to the end and keep on counting. Okay. I think that might make sense now. Okay. 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 And they all turn off. Perfect. Okay. I made it all fit. That was satisfying. And I'm going to be satisfied with my program no matter what my graphs look like. I have no guesses. I have no expectations. I'm at the spike of averageness. You know what? That's a place I'm perfectly happy to be. Cool. All right. I was happy with that process. Somebody did it in very few lines. Very nice. <laughs> like one person did it in that much less power usage. And it can be done for less cost. Hmm. Sweet. Can't be too careful when you make robots. Am I right or am I right? I am learning some more casual style English from Joe. <laughs> I was wondering. That didn't sound like you. You scared me for a second there, Jay. <laughs> So just for fun, let's take a quick look and see what I could do to reduce my things. I'm wasting a lot of lines on conditionals. I don't know, optimizing for line count is weird to think about, and uh, so I don't want to think about it. For cost. I can probably ditch the DX300. It only costs one yuan, though. Not so sure about getting this down to two MC four thousandths, though. I don't know. I can't tell where the cost went in that graph. Uh, for power usage, what's my profiler look like? That's a hotspot naturally. Those are hotspots naturally. Um, if I didn't have to store away the dat, but I have to do a- I have to store it. There's no other way around this, because... Oh, was my breakpoint still there? Or did I pause? My breakpoint was still there, I see. Uh, so that's what the profiler looks like. You need this. You need this. You do have to store that value because you got to do a four um, uh, four value compare. I guess I could send it off to another controller and maybe that could somehow be more power efficient, but I doubt it. That seems like it'd be less than processing it right there. I don't know, these graphs look very reasonable to me. Yeah, so I'm not sure what else uh, I would expect to see here. Okay, well, anyway, I'm satisfied. That was totally fine. And I'll see you next time for Control Router.